We hope everybody had a great weekend. Welcome to the meeting. If you are planning to make a uh, public comment, please approach the podium and make sure the microphone uh, button is pushed. Um, also, please make sure if you have your cell phones that they are on mute or vibrate. And with that, a clerk if, or Jen, if you could please read the first item. Number eight, ordinance third reading, approving and establishing revised water and sewer rates, tap and system development fees, administrative fees, service charges and penalties, and septic and commercial waste dump rates as recommended by the Board of Public Utilities. Staff report, please. Brad Bowen, Administration Manager, Board of Public Utilities, Finance Committee. Um, before you is a proposed eight and 10% rate increase, 8% on the water, 10% on the sewer. These rate increases have been based off of our study with FCS and trying to keep up with the costs from our suppliers associated with utilities and chemicals. As you guys have heard our spiel multiple times, I'm trying to keep it short, so available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions for BOPU? Hearing none, any comments from the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion? I would move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed, that item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 11, ordinance second reading, amending section 5.12.030, licenses and permits types of chapter 5.12, alcoholic liquor and malt beverages of Title V business licenses and regulations of the Municipal Code of the City of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Staff report. Mr. Chair, Chris Jones, City Clerk, the ordinance amendment before you is uh, basically to comply with the new um, legislation legislative changes that took place regarding some liquor licenses involving the airport liquor license, bar and grill, and a couple others. This just simply refers to certain sections of statute. Um, it also, the deputy city attorney, Mr. Brody, went through and did a little bit of cleanup as well on this ordinance. Um, just kind of puts it more in a little better format. Also, in addition to this is the inter um, the definition of adult entertainment, which was required by the legislature that we we have that, um, every licensing authority. So the clerk's office, the attorney's office, and the mayor worked on this definition. There, it is a substitute, I believe, you have before you that we would recommend that you move to amend by sub. And I'd stand for any questions. Thanks, Chris. Stand by. Any questions for Chris? Dr. Aldrich? Uh, thank you, Chairman White, through you. Uh, Chris, can you tell me, my understanding from talking with some airport managers from around the state was that the, this actually, the new legislation closes a loophole for the airport to um, use its liquor license to produce income off-site. Uh, through you, Chair, to Dr. Eldridge, basically that's correct. That It left it open previously to where they didn't specify it had to be in the commercially used a terminal. So this is to prevent it from doing other things like that, yes. Great, thank you. Any other questions for Chris? And that was certainly a good change, I think. Um, there are no questions for Chris, comments from the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve on second reading. Second. Mr. Chairman, I would move to amend by substitution dated May 26, 2023. Second. It's been moved. It's been moved and seconded to amend uh, the ordinance. So I think we have to approve the amendment first and then go back to the main motion as amended. So all the um, if there are comments or questions on the amendment. Hearing none, all those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. Uh, as no one's opposed, then the item is amended. So we're back on the main motion. Is there any comments or questions on the main motion as amended? Hearing none, all those in favor of the ordinance as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed, that item moves forward. Next item, please. 
Number 17, resolution, approving the budget of the Cheyenne Downtown Development Authority for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th of 2024. Staff report. Staff report. Good afternoon. My name is Robin Lockman and I'm the city treasurer. Uh, city code requires that the Downtown Development Authority shall, before the first day of May of each year, submit to the governing body a proposed operating budget for the forthcoming fiscal year. This budget shall be subject to alteration, modification, and approval by the governing body. Therefore, before you is a resolution requesting your approval for the Downtown Development Authority's fiscal year 2024 budget in the amount of $1,202,000. Charles Bloom is available at today's meeting if you have specific questions on the budget, and I will stand for questions as well. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Stand by. Comments or questions for Robin? Dr. Aldridge. Uh, thank you. Jeff, uh, through you, Chairman White. Robin, I'm, I'm looking at the what's budgeted for 2023 and then what's anticipated for 2024. And it looks like um, the budget decreases in 2024, um, but it still looks like there's a $200,000, $215,000 um, difference between 23 and 24. Um, is are there services that are going to be cut based on that decline in the budget? Mr. Bloom, can you clarify? And Chair, members of the committee, Charles Bloom, Planning Development Director. Here is the DDA Executive Director. I'm in title only there. Um, the difference there is we're keeping that $225,000. Uh, well, two things. Number one, what you're seeing pulled out is the city's contribution for personnel. Um, the contribution for the personnel cost is about 209000 That is for two positions, the Downtown Development Authority Administrator, which is Mr. Gaberkevich, which is behind me, and also another position, which will be full-time, that will be a support position for the DDA. So that is a, a difference that you see is because those personnel costs have been removed. I a follow-up question. Go ahead, Dr. Aldrich. Um, Understanding that DDA has moved in-house to the city, um, is there a reason why we wouldn't want to um, continue to maintain their budget um, as it had been in the past and those employees to actually be employees of the Cheyenne and DDA so that when they are able to stand on their own, we can move them back out easily? Chair, through you to Council Member Dr. Aldrich. Um, the reason we wanted to keep those separate because we wanted the employees for the DDA to be city employees. Um, there are some concerns um, with the past with the hiring and, and firing and management of employees being the sole responsibility of the executive board. With them being housed within the city, they fall under the city's personnel policies and they are citizens or they are employees of the city. Um, in the event we were to we would transition in the future to have DDA employees be employees of the DDA. At that time, we would do a similar budget amendment where that funding would then come out of the uh, DDA's general fund budget. And I'll, I'll expand just a little bit more real quick. Um, right now, we're trying not to intermingle any of the funds between the DDA and the city. Right now, all the personnel costs, those are all grouped in the general fund. They are under that miscellaneous items that is in the budget that's in front of you all at this present time. Um, the 1.8 or $1.1 million you see here in this document, those are separate accounts that are independent of the city, and those are housed in a different financial institution. So we're ensuring that these two pots of money are kept separate. Um, and likewise, that $220,000 reduction, that used to be a direct con a contribution from the city to the DDA, which would then be housed at offsite at a different financial institution. So in the event that the um, DDA does end up um, having employees of its own in the future, uh, we would simply amend the budget and work on figuring out a way to transfer those employees over. I hope that answers your questions there. It does. My, my concern is that my understanding was that DDA coming in-house was a stopgap measure, that this is not meant to be long-term. So I want to make sure that we keep our books separate and we keep our expenses separate so that when they are able to be independent again, we can move them back out easily. Thank you. 
Any other questions for Charles? Hearing none. Mr. Are, Chair? Yes, Mr. Escobel. Sorry about oh, that. I just was wondering when the the next mill levy vote's going to be. Coming up, I believe. Mr. Bloom? And Chair, members of the committee, uh, the next mill levy vote is expected to occur this November. It's annually? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, the mill levy, I believe it is every four years. It is, it is voted on. And at the last election, it was increased from 10 mills to 20 mills. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions for Charles? Any comments from members of the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed, that item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 20A, pipeline easement agreement between the City of Cheyenne and Samson Exploration LLC for installation and maintenance of pipelines on city-owned property. Revenue to the city. Staff report. Don't, don't all come up at once. <laughs> Chair, members of the committee, Charles Bloom, Planning and Development Director. This is really a collaboration with multiple folks, with the city engineer, with the Planning and Development Department. Um, this is essentially a pipeline easement across the CB and Q Greenway, which is located out off of HR Ranch Road. Uh, we had some similar easements that were for electrical utilities regarding transmission lines. Um, one item, one thing with this was it was waiting for several weeks to have an appraisal complete. Uh, Mr. Cobb, city engineer, he had been organizing that mm -hmm. appraisal. Um, I do not have the information directly up in front of me, but can. Um, the appraisal uh, did come back. Uh, he, he has it right, oh, he's over there. And he'll let you know what that appraisal amount was. In, in um, short, we do recommend approval of this um, MOU. This. This is the one I'm sorry. Perfect. I'll let Mr. Just, Cobb take over there. Go ahead, Mr. Cobb. <laughs> Chairman, members of the Finance Committee, Tom Cobb, City Engineer. Um, two appraisals came back, one for two different parcels. Burlington Trails came back at $1,513. And then Lot 1, Block 2, Plains Industrial Park came back at $302 for a total of, I'm going to get this right, 18 15 Eighteen dollars $1,815. Now, the other part of this is, is we also wanted them to be able to pay for the appraise fee. So unfortunately for us, the appraisal fee came back larger than the appraised value. So that's always one of those smart things at $2,450. Yeah, that was going to be my question yep. too. Um, okay, any questions for Mr. Cobb? I see there's a representative from Samson Energy. Yes, Troy Smith, a representative with Samson here today, uh, Samson Exploration. Just want to see if you guys have any questions here to answer any questions. We're agreeable to the consideration, even though we kind of total the easement value, but we're we're agreeable. Okay. Um, stand by, Dr. Aldridge. I turn right through you. Thank you for pay paying for the appraisal. <laughs> yes. No problem. Thanks for your service. We really appreciate it. Okay. Are there any comments from members of the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I'd move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of the easement agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item. Number 20C, professional services agreement between the City of Cheyenne and Terracon Consultants Incorporated for landfill leche system design modification and maintenance contract. Staff, staff report. Uh, good morning, member, members of the committee. Uh, Sam Quattrini, landfill manager. Uh, this is a contract with Terracon Consultant for um, the landfill leche system uh, for maintenance and design modifications. Uh, this will cost bear cost of sixty one thousand four hundred dollars, um, and it will be paid through the solid fund, uh, solid waste fund. If you have any questions, stand by. Questions, Mr. Roybal. 
So this is just for uh, for maintenance that the leach field's not failing or anything. Yes, we we're bound to our permit to have uh, uh, no more than twelve inches of leachate on top at the bottom of the landfill. Okay. So we have both maintenance and then we have some design improvements uh, that we need to do. So it will okay. be for that purpose. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, comments from the questions or comments from the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve an amount not to exceed $61,400. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this professional services agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed, that item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 21A, contract modification number one to contract number 7531 between the City of Cheyenne and Waste Management of Colorado Incorporated for the Recycling Services Project to extend the agreement to April 15th of 2014. Staff report, please. Vicki Nemechek, Public Works. This is a contract annual um, extension to the recycled material contract with Waste Management. It, re it uh, maintains the $200,000 not to exceed price. Our recycling right now is running about $15,000 a month, so we're within that uh, note, and it will include the same, what I like to refer to as the fabulous five, paper, plastic, one, two, four, and five, cardboard, cans, and glass, food grade only. Thanks, Vicki. Stand by. Questions for Vicki? Mr. Chair? Mr. Roybal. Do you actually call it the Fabulous Five? I called it the Fabulous Five on the radio. Okay. <laughs> That's a good hook. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions for Vicki? Mr. Chair. Mr. Escobel. Director Nemanchuk, are we starting to see our contamination percentage go down or is it? Vicki Nemechek, Public Works. Mr. Royal, the uh, actually the contamination in the last. Oh, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Escobel, sorry. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> Same hairline. I can't yeah. help it. <laughs> meeting, meeting out of order. <laughs> That's why I have a beard. Okay. <laughs> um, and the question was. The contamination rate. Yes, coming the contamination down. rate. The contamination um, actually over the last two months has decreased. Great. Any other questions for Vicki? Comments or questions from members of the public? Mr. White. Michael White, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a question in all due respect to the governing body and uh, Ms. Nemechek. Uh, are there any contractors available that form work in the state of Wyoming in, instead of doing business with somebody in Colorado? I'll let Ms. Nemechek answer that. We've contracted with waste management as long as I can remember, but are there, I know we put it out to bid each time it's up, so but I'll defer to you, ma'am. Vicki Nemechek, Public Works, we did uh, do an RFP, and the only responder was waste management. Sure. Thanks for that clarification. Other comments from members of the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve an amount not to exceed $200,000. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Number next, 20, next item. Number 21B, renewal of contract number 7535 between the City of Cheyenne and Blue, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Wyoming for third-party administrative services and group health insurance benefits for city employees. Staff report. Good afternoon, Darren Hass, Human Resources. First of all, I love you. I love you too, hairstyle. Uh, Don't forget this, the chair and the chair. <laughs> this is a this is a renewal contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Wyoming. They've been a great partner for four years now. Uh, the TPA this is really a TPA agreement since we're self insured. And the bottom line, this is it's going up a dollar seventy per member, three percent. So pretty minimal. We're very fortunate, and thanks to Novo for some hard negotiations and really looking at lots of different options, over thirty options for us. 
That is good news, Darren. Thank you. Comments or questions for Darren? Mr. Chair. Mr. Roybal. So with Blue Cross Blue Shield, are, are we happy with them? Or are they doing what we want them to? Or Yeah, our employees have been very happy. I, I think I think a lot of it's consistency. They have they, they get to have the same provider, same care, continuum of care. They follow a plan. So it's nice to not have to change every year like we were in previous years. Okay. Thank you. Comments or questions from members of the public? Mr. White. And I'm sorry, every time I say that, Mr. White, I look for my dad, so I apologize. But that's okay, Michael White, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had the privilege of starting to go to the Board of Public Utilities board meetings a couple of weeks ago. And the report from Brad Brooks was the last three years, especially this year, they didn't have any increases. So my question is, number one, Board of Public Utilities uh, employees or employees of the city. Um, so they've been under Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I'm hearing today of an increase from the man from the Human Resources department so it's a question how does the board get a better rate if i understand my uh, uh comments that were at the board's meeting two weeks ago so is there something different the city's doing with the regular employees versus the board of public utility employees getting a better rate from them than other employees just a question so thank you thank you Darren, I'll let you clarify. It's yeah, through actually you, a good question that folks may may not easily know. So go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chair. The, the biggest difference is they're they're fully insured. So they're paying, they're paying for the Blue Cross is paying for their claims, all the utilization. We do not pay for we pay for that directly to Blue Cross. They have a board of public utility has an overall contract that includes all these, all these fees. We're self-insured, so we just pay. The per member fee, Blue Cross is strictly just handling our network, sending us our bills, figuring out the copay for our employees, and we pay the bill directly. So the difference, uh, there's a lot of difference in how it's handled. And yes, you know, Blue Cross did, did give a board of public utility rate pass of zero this year, and but the the, the fees are, the fees are embedded in there. I'm not sure if that helped. Thank you for that information. Other comments or questions from members of the public. Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this contract renewal, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed, that item moves forward. Number 21C, renewal of contract 7536 between the City of Cheyenne and Granular Insurance Company for stop loss insurance for city employees. Welcome back, Darren. Not that you left, but go ahead. Thank you again, Darren Hass, Human Resources, Human Resources and Chair of the Employee Benefit Committee. This will be our second year renewal partnership with Granular. With any self-insured plan, you have to have an insurance policy to make sure we're covered for any catastrophes. And their, their rate is also charged per member. So it was $3.92. It's going up to $4.07. So 3.75 percent increases with granular per member. Thank you, Darren. Dr. Aldrich, you have a question? I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman White. I, Darren, I'm just curious. My understanding is that with this stop loss insurance policy, it basically protects our self-insurance pool because if someone were to have a catastrophic incident, that this is then would kick in. And so it's worth our it's worth a four dollars and seven cents per employee or um, premium to protect our self-insurance pool. Is that correct? Thank you, Mr. Chair. That is correct. We It's not uncommon to have a million-dollar baby that has some complications. They have to take them down to Children's University down in Denver. And those expenses are extremely costly, well over a million dollars. So this is our coverage. A follow-up question. Do you know um, if we utilized this through Blue Cross Blue Shield this last year, and if we did, did what the benefit we our employees received outweigh what we paid them. I may call on uh, Kelly with Novo, if that's okay. Good evening, Kelly Grady, insurance consultant for Novo Benefits. We also do consulting for the Board of Public Utilities. So I'll make one point on that. Um, it has to do with risk. 
you guys are a little bit unhealthier than the Board of Public Utilities. The Board of the Board of Public Utilities are also, they are a fully insured group and it's just the, the underwriting is done a little bit differently. With a stop loss carrier, it's very important to have a stop loss carrier. You guys pay the first $150,000 for any individual and after that it goes to the stop loss carrier. We did hit a stop loss claim, um, but almost every year inflation, medical inflation is nine to 12%. So this is really um, very cheap coverage for something that you absolutely need. Thank you. Other comments or questions from the committee? Questions from the public? Well, Mr. Chair, I had one more. Oh, Mr. Escobel, go ahead. Um, yeah, to Director Haas, uh, when you, you mentioned the million dollar baby and we're talking about wellness fairs and, and being proactive, so if an employee spouse is um, expecting, do we do follow-ups to make sure that they're doing what they need to do with prenatal care? Because I know if you're proactive on that end, then you're probably going to prevent the million-dollar baby on the other end. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I think Blue Cross does a great job with the provider network, uh, working on continuum care, prenatal care, postnatal care. So. We feel very confident in Blue Cross's providers. Okay, now we'll go to questions from the public. Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this contract renewal, please signify by saying aye. 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 That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 22F, consideration of bid number S-13-23 for an agreement between the City of Cheyenne and Z, Z Seal Coating Incorporated for the 2023 Crack Seal Number 1 Project, 2019 to 2022 Optional 1% Sales Tax Fund. Go ahead, Mr. Cobb. Good afternoon, Chairman White and members of the Finance Committee. I'm Tom Cobb, City Engineer. So before you and for your consideration is bid number S-13-23 for our annual crack seal project. Um, and it covers about 30 miles or 10% of our streets. Um, the total amount of the contract is $448,265.26. We had two bidders and Mr. Klon and I have reviewed the bids along with uh, our purchasing manager, uh, TJ Bartabord, and we would ask that you uh, approve the bid in the amount of 448-265-26. And with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thanks, Mr. Cobb, stand by. Questions, Dr. Aldridge. Chairman White, through you. Tom, I turned over on the back side of this, there's a, a staging area one, staging area two. That is not indicative of two different projects or it, it, because the bid also says 2023 crack seal number one so is this bid covering both all of the things that are in blue on this map or is okay it's not that this is the first stage and then we're going to have a second stage that's going to be a, another contract amount later go ahead chairman through you to dr aldrich Everything that you see shown on the map will be completed with this project. The reason that there's two staging areas was that we had some leftover product from last year's Cracks Hill, which is why it's staged at the Street and Alley shop. So the city is furnishing to the contractor some of the Cracks Hill product that they'll use at staging area one. Then the contractor will provide the remainder to staging area two to use for the remainder of the project. Thank you for being a good steward of our resources. Yeah, thanks for that clarification, Mr. Escobel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you on. Uh... Section E, going through East Pergine, are we including the roundabout and the two cracks that are coming through there now? So it's starting to turn into a speed bump. And Chairman White, through you to Councilman Escobar. No, sir, we're not including those on those. That's Those are concrete pavement. It's part of a different project. It's going out next summer. Okay, well, my own, only follow-up on is that crack's been there for three years now, so... Chairman White, through you, understood, sir. It is concrete pavement, so it is. It, but it will go through next year. I've got it on the. It's on the tip and the step. It'll it'll go next year. We need some other improvements that need to be done with that roundabout. So we got operational improvements that we're going to make to try to decrease the crash rate. So we thought we'd combine that together. We want to close it once and and fix all of it at once. Okay. Thank you. 
Other comments or questions for Mr. Cobb? Comments or questions from the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve an amount not to exceed $448,265.26. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? That's always your question. <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of the big consideration, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed, that item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 22G, consideration of bid number E-19-23 for one palletized paint stripper unit for the City of Cheyenne Traffic Division, 2019 to 2022 optional 1% sales tax fund. Staff report. Boy, I'm worried about you being back <laughs> at the podium, Vicki, so go ahead. So am I. So am I. Um, this is a uh, palletized stripe uh striping machine painting machine for the traffic um division it's uh replacing a vintage 1992 palletized striper if anybody's in the market um this one does crosswalks legends school zones that kind of thing things that we can't do with the paint striper that drives down the road happy to answer any questions thanks vicky stand by comments or questions for vicky Hearing none, comments or questions from the public? Hearing none, all those in favor of the big... Oh, oh, sorry. Do we have a motion? Do I have a motion from the committee? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would move sorry. to approve an amount not to exceed $75,945 even. Is there a second? Cents. Okay, let's get some clarification on the amount there. The amount on the memo says $75,945 even. So we'll go with the amount listed on the on the memo. Yep. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of that big consideration, please signify by saying aye. 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 That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 22H, consideration of bid number E-24-23 for four new trucks for the City of Cheyenne Landfill, Aquatics, and Facilities Division, 2019 to 2022 optional 1% sales tax fund, solid waste fund, insurance claims, and general fund. Staff report. Good afternoon, committee members. TJ Bartlebort, Purchasing Manager, City of Cheyenne. Uh, before you is a bid consideration for bid E2423 for four trucks. Two of them are for the landfill division, one for aquatics, and one for facilities maintenance. Uh, one bidder responded to this bid. The bid tabulation is attached for your review. Um, the city is looking to accept all of the bid prices except for two of the trade-in offers. We're going to hold those for auction as we think we can get a better price at auction than the offer provided by Ken Garf. Um, total amount of requested bid award is $260,772. This also includes uh, a provision in the bid for our surcharge uh, escalator that we've been using. Uh, that amount is $39,790.80. So the grand total requested award amount is $300,562.80. And just to confirm, uh, on two of the trucks, the delivery is over 550 days. So that's we won't be seeing those for a long time. So that's why we have that surcharge in there. Luckily, two of the smaller trucks are looking at 180 day delivery. So hopefully we'll see those sooner than later. So happy to stand for any questions you have. Thanks for that information, TJ. 500. Uh, I know Dr. Aldrich has a question, but over 500 days for delivery. Years. Stuff. Yes, the uh, Chairman White, those are for like the what, the what Ford calls the super duties, which is anything F-150 and larger. So the 250s, 350s, 550s, those we've seen big, big problems across the board with delivery and uh, allocations and just how it's hard to get trucks right now. I can, attest, I can attest to that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Dr. Aldridge. Chairman White, through you, I'm just curious if you can explain the insurance claims. I'm assuming that we had some loss that we were reimbursed for and we're putting that towards these trucks. Was Were those claims from vehicles that were in these uh, departments or divisions? 
Chairman White, through you to Dr. Aldrich, the subject truck that was damaged was the aquatics truck. It was damaged in a motor vehicle accident. Uh, it was, I don't, Jason can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe it was a, a city driver's fault. It was another party's fault. So Warm is providing the funds to replace that vehicle. So we do have to pay our deductible, but then Warm will pay the rest. Thanks for that clarification. Any other questions from the committee for TJ? Comments or questions from members of the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve an amount not to exceed $300,562.80. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this bid consideration, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 22I, consideration to purchase between the City of Cheyenne and Zero Graphic Equipment Systems Incorporated, ZEZI to cancel existing copier leases and to purchase 18 new copiers from the general fund. Staff report. And I know, Robin, that we've uh, received a lot of this information during our budget work sessions and such, but go ahead and provide some clarification if you would, please. Okay. <clears throat> Robin Lockman, City Treasurer. Uh, before you is an agreement to purchase 18 photocopiers, as you just said. Currently, the city has 26 copier leases. Six of those copiers will continue to have leases that uh, will expire in two to five years, so we'll keep those leases going. One of the copiers is for our transit program, and they will continue to keep paying for their copier via lease. It's, it's preferable for them the way that their grant is reimbursed instead of outlaying that kind of money. Planning and development also has one of the 26 leases, um, but Director Bloom doesn't believe they have a need for a copier and uh, instead will probably just look for a high quality scanner when their lease expires. Um, their operation is almost paperless, so he doesn't want to have the extra money that needs to be spent for that. That leaves a balance of 18 copiers. If this agreement is approved by the governing body, these remaining 18 copier leases will be canceled and the city will be purchasing outright new copiers to replace the leases. As I reported during the budget work sessions, I did an analysis of the advantages of buying versus leasing the city copy machines. I have determined that if we purchase and keep our copiers for at least six years, we'll almost break even. If we keep them for seven years, we will be ahead by about $20,000. Eight years, we'll be um, saving about $51,000, and it just keeps increasing each year. All copiers will still have maintenance agreements on them that will cover any repair and maintenance type of costs. The total cost to purchase the 18 copiers is $202,990.96. We will be using the one-time extra money from the state to um, pay for this expenditure. And I will stand for questions. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Dr. Aldrich? Uh, Chairman White, through you. I'm just curious, Robin, um, did we have to pay an amount to basically buy out our leases? Or are we purchasing these print these copiers from them and so they forgave those leases in exchange for us purchasing from them. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, they forgave the leases. And so this is the cost, the fair market value of the cost. Mr. Reibel. Mr. Chair, through you. So we, we're getting all brand new machines. We're not buying the machines that are sitting here. Yes, Mr. Chairman, yes. Okay. Correct. And do you, off the top of your head, know what the average life of a, I mean, I'm sure it's different from it, it, every different. Uh, right. It, it varies. Um, from my experience working with the city, every time our lease expires at five years, the copier still works great. Um, I did ask them and they said it can be anywhere from seven to 12 years. It just depends. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Robin? Any comments or questions from the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve it in an amount not to exceed $202,990.96. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this purchase consideration, please signify by saying aye. 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 That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 23B, request to extend the time period in which West Bay Edge LLC has to become operational for an additional year for their bar and grill and microbrewery licenses located at 714 West 20th Street, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Staff report. Mr. Chair, Chris Jones, City Clerk, the item before you is a request to extend the time period in which West Bay Edge LLC has to become operational for an additional year for their microbrewery license only. Originally, they submitted this, they thought 
they may run over just slightly on their bar and grill time, but luckily they've been open as most of you know. So this will only apply to the brewery portion, their brewery license. Um, they, they, from my understanding, they're having some issues trying to get some folks in that are experienced with that equipment to help them get the get it up and running. So that is the reason for the delay. And right. I don't know if they're online for any questions. Okay. okay. Can I try to answer any other questions? Thank Great. you. Thanks, Chris. Stand by. Dr. Aldrich. Uh, Chairman White, through you. Chris, I'm just curious, do we have anyone, do we have any additional brewery licenses available right now, or do we have anyone who's on a waiting list? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you to Dr. Aldrich, we do not have any that are on a waiting list. This isn't holding anybody up. And there are, and do we have any to give if someone were to approach us within the next year? Mr. Chair, yes, we do. Thank you. Comments or questions for Chris? Hearing none, comments or questions from members of the public? Mr. White? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, Michael White. Um, I guess I, I'm kind of trying to go back in my memory bank with different licenses that were issued by the city clerk. And in due respect to Chris, but I remember when uh, Carol Inikoff was the city clerk and there was uh, one particular uh, operation downtown where the hole was, where the big conglomerate hotel company was going to um, build a hotel, 10 stories. They got the license. They couldn't get the job done because the funding wasn't there after two years and their license have to, had to be given back. So my question is, does the city ordinance allow this to be extended or is it just uh, an agreement between you and the council or do they just have to give it back after a certain period of time? Thank you. Thanks for the question. Uh, I'll let Chris quote the statutory language, but <laughs> yes, uh, a park license can be extended for one year if I'm if I'm correct. Mr. Chair, through you, Chris Jones, City Clerk. Um, statute allows for a license to be parked for one year, and then at the end of that one year, they can come back to the licensing authority and ask for an extension of another year for a maximum of two years. Um, and that is as far as they can go, and that is through the statute. Thanks, Chris. Any other comments or questions from the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve an extension of the parked brewery license only for one year. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this request to extend the time period, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That uh, request for extension has passed. There are no other items on the agenda. So this meeting is adjourned. Have a good day.